Thanks, Jerry. Uh, pleasure to be here, and thanks very much to the Vertical Events team for the invite to come along and present today. Um, I'll give you a rundown on Q, which is uh, now our core project. Um, we're in the Murchison of WA. Forward-looking statements, uh, please read at your leisure. The presentation's on our website. So we're targeting major high-grade gold systems uh, and near-term production. The Q project, uh, we've got a big system. We've got over 20 kilometres of strike in the shear zones. Uh, we've had multiple high-grade hits, um, 11 and 54, 21 and 21 at break of day. Um, we've got a 440 kilo-ounce gold resource base at the moment. We've got five third-party mills nearby um, and capacity within those mills for high-grade feed. Um, we're looking on the expiration front as well for our, an analogies to the Great Fingal deposit, which is a two million ounce deposit of 10 grams, so a significant company maker. We're on 100% owned mining leases. Um, we've just made the new discovery at Lake Austin North. Uh, we've hit 36 metres at 3.6 grams, and within that there was a 20 metre zone running six grams per tonne. Uh, we've got West Gold on board in the last few months as a cornerstone investor, and we have a non-binding term sheet at the moment with Westgold on the existing resource base. We're looking forward to progressing that further um, over the next few months. We're well funded, we're currently drilling, uh, and we've got results awaited for additional work on Lake Austin North. Just a bit of a snapshot. Um, at the end of uh, June, we had 5.2 million. We're roughly sitting, when the quarterly comes out shortly, uh, at about 4 million cash puts our market capitalisation at about $20 million. Uh, so at the moment, you can see our major shareholders in there. We have three corporates on the register with West Gold, Silver Lake and Independence, all having an interest in, in the company. The company got a modest EV at around 36 bucks an ounce. Uh, we anticipate getting into production in the next uh, 12 to 18 months and looking forward to an upgrade. Uh, when we do that, and uh, Average producers are producing roughly at around, are valued at roughly an EV of around $98 at the moment in Australia. We're in a pretty good location. We're about 30 k south of the township of Kew. You can see the Great Northern Highway running up the middle of the project area there. Breaker Day and Lena. You can see the deposit in the red text there. We've got two mills quite a short distance away, Tuckabiano, West Gold to the north, Mount Magnus to the south, both roughly around 40 k's away from where our project sits. The Murchison has produced over 20 million ounces of gold. It's a very well endowed district. Um, we're continuing to find more gold uh, from surface in the Murchison. The moment the big deposits we feel are under the salt lakes, uh, there's roughly around 20 to 50 metres of cover in those areas and we're actively exploring those zones. We've made a new high discovery uh, about 18 months ago at break of day, um, and the most recently recent one at Lake Austin North. As I mentioned, we've got the high grade break of day resource. It's roughly running at around seven grams per tonne, two twin loads. You can see there running sub vertical, uh, and we've got the leaner deposit roughly 130 metres further west of that. So we're looking at a cross section roughly the top 200 metres. And you can see some of the grades marked down there on the, left, on the right hand of the screen. Uh, you know, significant intersections from 11 to 30 metres wide, ranging from 10 to 50 grams. In long sections, so this is along the strike of the ore body, you can see in the red, more than 20 gram metres. Um, and then in the yellow and orange, above five gram metres. Uh, a number of high-grade shoots within the enclosures of the ore body, and we're currently tracking those at, at depth as we go. There are a number of intersections we have outside the current resource base, uh, including uh, those intersections you see on the right there. At Lena, mineralisation from surface, roughly 150,000 ounces, reasonably pretty good stripping ratios um, on the deposit and a number of high-grade core zones within that as well. Again, you can see in the red that we're currently tracking as well as we get deeper. We have about 1.6 kilometres of strike um, on the loads um, and only tested currently to about 200 metres vertical depth. So we're looking at good infrastructure, as I mentioned, within this district. 
Uh, we have West Golden and Remelius, only 40 kilometres with operating plants from where we are at Moichi. We've got West Gold come on as our major shareholder. They're currently dewatering and developing at Big Bell and at roughly a 3.7 gram ore body. We have a non-binding term sheet with West Gold. As I mentioned, we're progressing that at the moment to get to terms for a, for a fully fledged a binding legal agreement. At the moment, it's economic to truck or significant distances in the gold fields. Remelius are trucking seven and a half gram dirt, 300 kilometres into the mine at Mount Magnet. Breaker days reasonably me close. We have strategic corporate appeal. We've got multiple potential processing options um, and we're looking at it for standalone growth for the deposits out on the lake that are 100% Musgrave and not linked to any future deal. The metallurgy has been fantastic. We're getting really solid uh, recoveries, 96, 97% for the gold. There's nothing deleterious we're seeing in the ore. There's nothing negative. We're getting good gravity component recoveries as well, which reduce reagent usage. You can see uh, the gold tail in the pan from RC chips, and it's just a good indication of the gravity recoveries that we're getting. The big upside for us is in the, on the expiration front. We think we've got an analogue to Great Fingal, as we've mentioned. Great Fingal deposit, you can see there, up near Township of Q, 2 million ounces, roughly around 10 grams per tonne. There's still a significant deposit and amount of ore left at the base of Great Fingal. Very similar geology to where we are down at Moiji, about 30 k's to the south. Same rock type, same host, same, same alteration. Uh, looking at a second order structure off the main north-south splay uh, and looking at massive laminated and string of quartz veining. The image there you can see on the right shows you what the salt lakes look like in the region. So 99% of the time and 99% of the lake is dry, uh, minor salt bush. We've got eight kilometres of strike of the 20 that is on normal dry land and another 12 k's under the lakes. It's had very little testing in the past. As I mentioned, we're 100% owner of the tenure uh, and significant upside potential. You can see the location of, of Lake Austin North just sitting in here um, and the deposits we've delineated with the resource base at Lena and Break of Day and a number of other prospects as we head south on this Break of Day shear zone. But this is a significant area we're interested in, up through here. We've done a, recently done a, a regional gravity survey. That has helped define the geology and the strike of the shear zones under the cover as we head out on the lake. We've got a, um, a nice position here at Lake Austin North on the shear zone. This is break of day and Lena as we head north under the lake. This white line is the edge of the lake, so this is all lake system. So we've hit intersections in the order of 36 at 3.6 and 20 at 6 out there. We've got extensive regolith gold halo. So this is gold dispersion. As the gold comes up, the water table disperses gold over a nice mushroom-like effect in the regolith. And we're seeing strong, strong intercepts, as you can see there including big wide zones of 150 metres at, at half a gram. And within those nice high grade cores, uh, again, you can see 20 at six, five at 15 grams. Uh, re recently announced yesterday, another 30 metres at two and a half, including six at eight. So very strong gold halos. We also have another zone just out here. We've known the C zone. This is a, a, a tonalite, so a granite. The shear zone comes up the edge of the granite and flexes around the edge. The gold is being deposited here just out from the contact. And you can see it depicted there in that cross section across the A zone. So transported cover in that yellow zone near the surface, about 50 to 60 metres, into the weathered saprolite, so the weathered rock, basement rock beneath, getting, giving you this mushroom blanket of gold and then the high-grade gold beneath. So at the moment we've tested 
and a number of sections drill down to roughly 150 to 200 metres. We've got some RC results we're waiting for over the next few weeks, um, and we've got a diamond rig coming out here in, the, in about seven to 10 days to, uh, to start testing at depth some of these targets and a long strike. I just briefly mentioned the C zone. We've got very few holes in this, and we're looking at roughly around 300 metres from A zone. Slightly different orientation, we've got a granophoric dolerite, same host rock that hosted the Great Fingal deposit. Single traverse with two holes at the moment in it that hit the basement and intersections the order of 60 mod metres at 0.8, including six, gram, six metres at five grams. So high grade cores within broader intervals of gold alteration. Uh, really strong alteration over thick intervals um, and we're looking forward to doing some more diamond drilling in this to test it at a long strike and at depth. We're about three kilometres north along the shear zone from break of day. Uh, and in cross-section, this is what C-Zone looks like at the moment. So you can see, again, transported cover, strong mushroom halo of gold in the regolith above, uh, and then we're just on the base of that fresh rock boundary at the moment. So we're looking forward to drilling the fresh rock component beneath this, but decent intersections we're seeing in the regolith as well. We really, at this stage, don't know what the upside potential of this, but we're looking for deposits in the range of half a million to two million ounces. Soil just geochemical and geophysical pro programs are happening over the extensions we have currently to the Moyagi Gold system. We've got RC drilling and waiting results on that and diamond drilling starting, as I mentioned, in about a week. We'll continue that program with an Air Corps program testing targets along strike. We think Lake Austin North at the moment we've tested over about 600 metres of strike, but we still have two kilometres of, of contact on the edge of that tonal light, that granite, to test. We're running development studies independently of West Gold in the background, uh, looking at what money we can make out of the existing deposits at Lena and Break of Day and processing them obviously through a third party plant. So we've got resources, we've got grade, we're getting good recoveries. We're in a district with fantastic infrastructure and we have a lot of exploration upside. So we have all the high ingredients and the good ingredients to make a significant company and project. We're currently drilling, we're well funded, we have results to flow through and we're negotiating development options with Westgold at the moment too on the existing resource base. Uh, experience board and management. Um, I, as Jerry mentioned, my background is with Western Mining and BHP before spending the last seven years with Musgrave Minerals. Uh, Graham's ex Falconbridge, uh, Kelly Ross is ex Independence. And John Percival, many of you might know, based out of Sydney, is ex Barclays Bank. So a broad range of experience on the board. Thank you very much. I've got a booth um, at the conference. And please, if you have any questions, come and see me in the booth. I'm happy to answer anything you might have. Thanks. Thank you, Rob.